Aloha. It's May the 10th. It's Friday, 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Well, here it is. The title of this show is The Real Constitutional Crisis. And what we want to do is discuss where we are this week with, uh, as you've been watching the news, a, just a whole host of things that people would con say that constitutes a crisis mm -hmm. within our Constitution. Yeah. So without further ado, let's, let's hit it. All right, why don't you give us yeah, some of your first points, it. man? Well, first off, um, before we go down the points, know that Nancy Pelosi actually said it. She said, I believe we're in a constitutional crisis. Right. Now, Jerry Nadler, who's the chair of the Judicial Committee, right. he was the first one to say it. Right. Okay, so what leads us to this, this point? What leads us to this statement? It's, it's a very dramatic statement. We've heard it before. You know, we heard right. it in 2000 when, um, you know, we had the hanging chads in Florida and it wasn't clear how right. this election was going to be resolved. And right. I, I distinctly remember the comments about we're in a constitutional crisis. Right. Um, they certainly said it when um, Richard Nixon didn't want to turn over the tapes. Right. And yet the, uh, he was being asked to do so. Uh, so we've heard it through history. We heard it during the Clinton uh, right. impeachment. Right. Um, but what makes this one a little more serious and different? There's foreign actors involved, for one. Well, that's, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about, you know, where it is. Um, remember, we had um, a definitive statement that Don McGahn, the attorney for Donald Trump, right was not going to be allowed to answer the subpoena to testify in front of Congress. And that's still kind of up in the air because he's no longer working at the White House. Yeah. So he's a private citizen now. So there's a, there's a bit of dialogue and debate going on back and forth if he can even do that, if he even can do that. Right. And he has already waived privilege well, and that's, in the beginning. So I, I think that's the substantial argument that has to be played right. out. Right. And that is, at what point does executive privilege begin and stop? So we know that if you talk to the media, we know if you talk to friends, if we know if you talk to, you know, if you've been called in to testify and you testify about certain things, um, you have basically waived executive privilege. Right. But right. now the legal team for Donald Trump says, no, that's not the case. Well, they say, no, that's not the case everything. for everything, which well, is how we got to this crisis. <laughs> that's, yes, right? that's how we got here. That's I mean, how we got you here. can come up with the absurd, you know, minute reason why something, I won't answer a subpoena or we won't, we won't supply oh, right. someone to testify in front of the, the committees. And as bizarre as they are, um, they still have to be challenged right. legally. Well, and here he claims I've been the most transparent president that ever was. And I think, <laughs> oh, you lying sack of... <laughs> okay, we can't, can't say those things on there. Can't say those. I, I understand. Can call Wait, I can't do call them a liar. We've got how many? 10, over 10,000. Yeah. Over 10,000 lies. Over 10,000 lies in not and before this show is over, I want to talk about the whopper of the week. Huh? Okay. But that's, that's later after the other. <laughs> we probably won't have time for it. Okay, well, no, let's... we should make time for no, a whopper. We should make it. This was a whopper. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what else? Um, he doesn't want Barr to, right. to well, testify? He's saying that Barr is the one in charge of whether or not Mueller will testify. That's correct. Right? Well, Barr is already on record as saying, I don't mind letting him testify. That's correct. But now they're trying to walk it all back. Correct. And you can't take back video footage. No, you cannot. Just like no. he can't take back executive, I mean, uh, a waived privilege. Right. He cannot take that back. He's already done it, and it's too late. So they're just stalling for time, is my thought. Because the more they can stall, the closer we get to 2020. Yeah. And, and the more likely people are not going to be swayed against him unless they see the evidence that's yeah. there. Well, and remember, in previous shows, we've said the following. As long as he can tie this issue up and let the Democrats spend all their energy, oh, yeah. all their synergy, right. that's less time for passing bills right. or getting things done in the, in, in the House. Right. And at least saying we did this and now we're going to send it to the Senate. Now, if it dies in the Senate, we have something to point a finger at. Right. But, you know, the, the question is, can they walk and chew gum at the same time? Well, they're trying they can, hard. But they can. I the think problem so, too. Is, but is the media going to cover both sides of it? I don't know And about the media that. only has enough time and enough... You know, where's the hot story? Right. Is, it, is it the bill passage about the Affordable Care Act? 
is it the bill about you know a, a, a portion of immigration law that gets passed in the in the house probably not the relief efforts that come. just got voted on today right just this morning sorry i didn't mean to interrupt mm -hmm. you but okay. i thought i'd throw another one in there yeah but, um you know that that relief one is amazingly important to people there was a gal from ohio that stood up and talked about how half of her state is underwater, it's underwater right. and it won't ever be able to some stuff you know schools won't open hospitals right. won't open they need that money but because puerto rico's in there yeah not one single republican voted for it i understand it. but the point i'm trying to make is sorry the media no it's okay that's <laughs> no it's but that's exactly the stuff that is getting looked at and getting done right. but are we hearing that much about it no because no. All the oxygen in the room is being sucked out about the term of impeachment or the term of constitutional crisis or, you know, um, what constitutes this, this obstinance to the following contempt, the, the, you right. know, the, the rule of law. Right. So all the media attention is on that. And Donald Trump loves that right. because that's this less time spent on informing the American public that right. things actually are getting done. Right. Well, this morning, I, the only reason I got to see that is because I, I go to um, C-SPAN, mm -hmm. and they actually show the House of Representatives and what they're doing. So that's how I see it, because, yeah, the news does, they have one little ticker tape thing across the bottom, and that's it. They're all talking about this contempt. Um, and so they've charged Barr with contempt of Congress, but it's not the official vote yet, because it hasn't been the Correct. whole House voted on it. Just the committee voted on it. But now all the pundits, all they're talking about is um, um, what are they going to do about it? Now they've got this contempt. What are they going to do? It's fines or jail. I mean, they were even talking about some jail room or something that's in the basement of the Capitol building. And there is one that used to be there. It's yeah. supposed to um, hold Washington's uh, casket and corpse and stuff. But they... Um, they changed it, of course, over the years since then, and it turned into a jail for a little while, and now it just sits empty. So let's ask this question. Okay, well, let's do the, another item is the refusal or the, basically the orders to Mnuchin not to release oh my, my gosh, IRS. Oh, my that's so huge. My IRS returns to anyone, even right. though the language looks pretty resolute, shall. absolute, yes. shall, doesn't do mean it. maybe yeah. or possibly, yeah. shall means shall. Yeah. So the bottom line is, so we have a number of these things that, you know, Right. There are just carte blanche refusals to comply. Uh, to me, it looks like obstruction of justice. It is obstruction and of justice. And Nancy Pelosi even said he's self, um, he's, he is self. Uh, oh, getting himself into this whole impeachment thing, self-impeachment. Self-impeachment was the right. term. That was the term she used, right? And he is because he's thinking about how when Clinton was under impeachment, his approval ratings went up. So that's what he's thinking will happen for him. Well, we have some numbers about that. Uh, we'll, get, we'll share that in a bit. Um, okay. But the question is, are we truly in a constitutional crisis? Oh, gosh, yes. Because There I, is no doubt in my mind anyway. And, and most of the people that are professionals that do do that for a living, I'm just a citizen journalist, but in my mind, absolutely it is. And, and then when all the experts say the same thing, then I say, yes, it's true, we are. Well, let's look at over 800 experts. Let's 800 the, of them. Yeah, it was 700. Now it's over 800 that have oh, signed wow. the letter. These are former prosecuting attorneys. Oh, oh, I have one of their statements. And you can come up with a statement. But isn't it amazing that just two weeks ago, Jay Fidel was sitting in this chair talking about the lack of how attorneys were not right. getting engaged with some right. of the obstruction of justice, um, ignoring the rule of law right. that gets us to this constitutional crisis. Right. Only two weeks ago, Jay was, you know, very, stand very up. adamant that they right. needed to stand up. And two weeks later, we have 800 former prosecuting right. attorneys. And, and it, this is not something they wanted to do. Right. This is, makes them very uncomfortable. Some of them still have future careers in, in various, you know, agencies. And, right. And, sure. And so they, they took it upon themselves. They stood up. They stood tall. They signed a letter basically saying if this was an individual citizen, they would have been incarcerated by now. That's the quote okay, I have. Please, go ahead. It says, each of us believes, each of us, all 800 of them, each of us believes that the con conduct of President Trump described in Special Counsel Mo Robert Mueller's report would, in the case of any other person not covered by the Office of Legal Counsel policy against indicting a sitting president, would result in multiple felony charges for obstruction of justice, end quote. 
So that says it all right there. If he wasn't the president, and I have an issue with this. <laughs> the only reason they can't indict a sitting president is because somebody wrote a memo. An opinion. A, a memo. That's an opinion. Yeah. So why are we stuck by that dumb, mem that dumb memo? That just really bothers me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that should come up in part of the court, the court hearings coming I up. I think so. You know, I'll, um, I'll go rail at the judge. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's I, 800. You know, there 800 it is. 800 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the Bar Association was part of that uh, letter writing campaign or not, but it's, um, it's an official DOJ alumni statement mm -hmm. is what that is, too. Yeah. So it's not just lawyers. It's alumni, Department yeah. of Justice alumni. Right. So, so this gets at the point of people being afraid to stand up and testify about things. Right. They're afraid to basically call the emperor's clothes, you know, the, the emperor is naked. Right. Um, this is happening. Now the question is, is there enough behind this where citizens start to realize it's time to call my senator? I hope and it's so. time to call my House representative. Oh, and I hope so. more importantly, not in the blue states, but people in the red states. Because yes. that's where it makes a difference. Right. Um, and so that's the question is, will this be the, the first crack, if you will, in the vase? And to what degree does that crack get a little bit wider? I hope so. You know, we make jokes about people drinking the Kool-Aid, you know. It's like, wow, they drank the Kool-Aid. Because you can tell they're so far down that road. And I was watching an um, interview of Comey, James Comey, last night. Mm -hmm. Uh, on CNN, and it was, he's just so eloquent and reserved and, and relatable. And he talks about how it happens, such, it's such a subtle shift. Um, I can't remember, was it Anderson Cooper, I think, that was doing the interview? Right. And um, he asked him, you know, how? You were there, you stayed for a little while even. And he goes, you know, and he described that first dinner, and there was a lie, and he knew it was a lie. And he didn't say anything. And then by the end of the dinner, there was a couple more lies that had come out. And he didn't say anything. So then he's, after the dinner, he's feeling like, oh, my gosh, now I'm kind of complicit to those lies because I didn't say That's something. That's why he had to go and write a memo about it. That's why he wrote it down. Yeah. Exactly. And so it continued that way until he could take no more. So it's interesting that he more or less implied that he also was complicit. Yes, yeah. it was getting there. He was going down that same road that he has watched all the other Republicans in the Senate and in the House, do and people that are Trump supporters. And so pretty soon, you no longer, you know, you kind of like gloss it over. You gloss over the lies. And then, this was the most dramatic thing that he says, and then Trump eats your soul. That's what he said. Yeah. Because you're so you've already gone down invested that now. Yeah. You're so far down. You've compromised all of your moral, um, you know, everything's, and, and that's it. You're done. Yeah. Well, let's talk about little poll that was taken here recently. Okay. Uh, I believe this was on April 26th. This was the ABC um, Washington Post survey. Uh, let's just mm -hmm. talk about approval levels. 39% approve of Donald Trump right now. 54 are disapproving of his, of his, his work. Clinton at the time was 59% approval, 38% disapproval. Wow. So quite a shift there. But if you, look at, if you look at that approval number, it's always between 38 and 41, 42. Right. It he just has never, never shifts. been up to it just, it just He hasn't even been never, to 45. Never shifts. Um, the question was asked, the question was asked uh, did Trump interfere in this investigation? 47% said yes. 41% said no. Now, remember, every survey, poll, you're probably plus or minus 1% or 2%, maybe sometimes as high as 3%, either way. Right. Margin of error. Right. Uh, let's look at um, the question about impeachment. For Donald Trump, 37% yes, 56% no. That number is actually changing, though. That was much lower before. And that's for impeachment? Right. With Republicans, you mean? Uh, this was just general, no, not oh. just Republicans, just general. In general people. Nationwide type Only 37? Because, yeah. yeah, I thought it was up to 40-something, yeah. and it seemed like it was pretty balanced. That, you know, it's about half and half, mm -hmm. kind of like we've been looking at, half and half. You know, I just did a paper for school. I was taking a, a class in uh, communications and technology, and I did a whole thing on algorithms. And polls is where the main place where these algorithms are being used. 
Cambridge Analytica and all of these guys and the polls and how they feed the information into the right. algorithm is really kind of scary. Yeah. They're not just looking at people, what they like, what you'd like to buy, what you like to eat, where you go. They're, they're pinpointing your personality even. They know if you're an introvert or an extrovert. They can with 89%... Oh, yeah, with 89% yeah. accuracy, they can tell if you're a Democrat or a Republican without knowing that. Yeah. Well, let's do this. It's time for a break. Uh, let's come back to this okay. topic. I'm Tim Mappicelli with Tim Mappicelli with Cynthia <laughs> Sinclair, and we'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Tim Apichel with Cynthia Sinclair, and we're talking about constitutional crisis on Trump week. Uh, so let's get back to it. Let's talk about Jerry Nadler. He's the okay. chair of the Judicial Committee. Right. And what he is basically saying is that by denying all requests for the unredacted Mueller report, by refusing McGahn or, you know, Mueller, uh, Mueller or anyone to come, to and, testify, come and testify, right. that is, you know, it denies the basic law of the land. It does. And it's also Absolutely. separating the powers of Congress and what they are designed to do. Thank you. That's the big thing that I was going to say to you. And that's the main, that's what makes it a constitutional crisis, right? Is because it is absolutely 100% against what the Constitution says. It's illegal what yeah. he's doing. Well, here's what Nathard said. I, I like this quote. We have to vindicate the rule of law and we have to make sure no president is above the law, no American is above the law. No president is a dictator. There you and go. when you get to this point where you're completely ignoring any and all requests from Congress or these right. committees, you're basically folding your arms and saying, I am an executive and Congress does not count in this matter. Right. And that is a constitutional crisis. Right. Absolutely. So. It does. It takes all the power away from Congress. Congress has no power. But there's this one guy um, in the Intelligence Committee, right? Uh, Burr, I believe. Who's a Republican? He's, yeah, the Republican chair of the Intelligence Committee who has subpoenaed Trump Jr., which I thought was pretty funny. And we're going to get to that. But okay. I, Sorry, I, I, I keep no, jumping no, but around no, too no, much. It's, it's all right because this this is not only did we have the 800 signatures from DOJ, right? Okay. We also have a Republican who is in a fairly very very important part of the Senate, right? And he's a Republican, and he said, "No, we are going to hold Donald Trump Jr. accountable." Right. to the statements he made before before this committee versus what we've found to be in the Mueller report. Right, exactly. Okay, and he is taking flack for it. Yeah, and I'm oh, sure yes, I, he is. I can imagine just how many calls and how many people are bumping into him in the, you know, the halls of the Senate and uh, really laying it to him. Right. But and this is where, this is where it's, again, the crack in the vase. Is right. this, you know, further evidence that, you know, we've gone far enough? And I, I don't know so. what the answer is to that. I don't either, but I can just hope, right? That's all yeah. we can do is yeah. hope. We can hope that the Democrats will continue to move forward and not drag their feet. Because I believe that every day we wait, Trump gets more powerful. There it is. And that goes into the quote from Jerry Nadler on the following. Lawless administration is a tyrannical administration. Only recourse is to cite the, uh, the attorney general or contempt Right. And then from there, 
you, that's how you, you have to go through the recipe of our Constitution. Right. Now, Jerry Nadler said on an interview just recently, uh, yeah, this is not going to happen overnight. This could take weeks or months. So long as it doesn't take too long. And that's the part that worries me. And that's why I think that Trump is just doing this. He doesn't actually expect to prevail in any of these situations. I think he's just doing it so that he can stall for time. Yeah. And I know this is we, not on probably on the list, but um, did you know that um, Giuliani is going to the Ukraine to try to dig up dirt and to try to uh, prompt the Ukrainians to open an investigation against Biden? I, I heard something of that nature. So. <laughs> what? Dealing yeah. with a foreign agency to help your campaign again. Again. Yeah. <sighs> well, we probably won't have time to talk about the candidates, which we were hoping to do, but right. because there's just so much here. Yeah. I do want to talk about Donald Trump Jr., though, and the fact that um, he has now been issued a subpoena right. to testify. And did you happen to see Donald Trump's response? No, I did not. Well, basically, he said, I'm shocked and surprised. He's been so transparent on everything. Oh, right. Okay. And right. he's, you know, he's cooperated beyond, some, beyond the 20 hours right. of testimony. Right. Well, that's not really true. Right. Um, but so what are what are the what are the you know what are the implications of Donald Trump Jr. going before the Senate and testifying? Well, he certainly has his Fifth Amendment rights. Right. And, and, he, and he most likely will will yeah. go ahead and exercise them. Oh yeah. Now there's discussion about well if he has if he's going to exercise his fifth, then why bother subpoena him and calling him in in the first place? And that I take issue to. That that degree of discussion because that is the power of subpoena, whether he wants to sit in that chair in front of, you know, 35 different cameras on 35 different networks, that's fine. And if he wants to sit there and evoke his Fifth Amendment right, right. I don't have a problem with that. But you just don't blow it off and say, well, you know, I, my attorney's going to tell me to, to evoke the Fifth, so why even show up? Well, let's think what the, the beginnings of the conversation about impeachment were all about. Is, well, we can't actually make it stick because we don't have the Senate anyway, so why even bother? And I'm thinking it's, it would, the biggest thing about doing that is that it opens the door for them to be able to have better access to all of the information and the investigations that they want. Right. Now, uh, Vice Chair Blumenthal uh, basically said, okay, if Don Jr. fails to show up, then we should put him in jail. Yeah. And it's no different if... If any other citizen was asked to call contempt, it's that's called right. Contempt of Congress. That's right. And so we'll see. I, I suspect he will show up, but that's just my prediction. I, I don't think they'll just say, "Well, he's going to invoke his fifth. Here's a letter from the attorney to, uh, you know, to um, uh, Richard Burr, and he's not going to show up because he's going to invoke the fifth. But we'll see how that goes. Right. So. Well, that's kind of like the discussion they were having too in. Um, taking the vote to hold a uh, bar in contempt was that, well, what are we going to do about it? You know, what good is it going to do? But they did it. And I'm so glad that, that um, Nadler really pushed that through yeah. so that they would continue. I mean, I think the main vote happens on Tuesday. Yeah. So we'll see. Right. News at 11. News at 11. Okay, so, <laughs> News hey, at well, 11 let's, next week. You, you know, guys. let's, <laughs> let's talk about something called the China trade war. Oh my. Um, the you know, talks fell apart today, this yep, morning. Yeah, they sure they did. fell apart. Now, any guesses why the stock market didn't just plummet? Or do you think they've already priced it in? Well, I think it's been going down, right, yeah. for the last well, week. I mean, they, that might be the pricing in of, right? of failed talks. If you're a farmer... I think it's still coming. If you're a farmer in the Midwest... Oh, you're screwed. You just have to be devastated. You're screwed. Your life is over. You just lost your whole livelihood. Because of this, yeah. not to mention the fact that we as taxpayers are going to be paying more money for all of the goods that we get from China. And there's a lot of them. Well, they, they <laughs> estimate right now that um, with a family of four, the average increase in everything you're going to pay for as a direct result of this, this, um, too. Yep. this trade war is seven hundred sixty seven dollars and potentially going to cost nine hundred thirty four thousand U.S. jobs. Um, <sighs> That's now, if this goes beyond May 18th, this then also could hit the auto sector. Right. And so that's going to have even a larger impact right. on, on potential job loss. And so are we playing a game of chicken here? Is Donald well, Trump? We shouldn't be because China, doesn't China hold most of our debt? 
also? Yes, they do. Okay. So or a lot of it. No, not most of it. They hold a lot of a it. A lot of it. I'd okay. say maybe 15, 20%. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and they vow to retaliate strongly. Well, that's what they've said. China is, tends to want to influence rather than go into a direct conflict. You could see uh, subtle actions such as if you're a farmer and you ship your, your goods, your, your produce to China, what's to say that, that those goods don't get off the boat? They just right. sit there and rot. Right. And you, you know, don't sell anything. That's a you know, passive-aggressive way of, of engaging in this war. Right. Well, um, Trump says, oh, but it's going to work out wonderful because now they'll be able to sell their stuff to other people. And even people here in America, we can even use it to feed the homeless and wow. the hungry. And I thought, well, he can't be for real when he's saying this. China will sell it to other people. Yeah. Other countries. Other those countries. Those people. Yeah. <laughs> but we won't you know, get the American money. You know, American farmer, you just lost your place in line. Please come with us yeah, and exactly. show you the door. Well, we're right. going to let someone else take your spot. And now they're going to be our preferred country vendor right. that we are going to, you know, and purchase it's from. It's not something we'll ever get back. Not easily. And not, I mean, a lot of the economists that, that I saw um, being interviewed this week were just like, it's, you know, if that goes, it's never going to come back. Because once they've already put their, you know, market with someone else, they're not going to, yeah. they're not going to come back to America, especially because they're mad at us. Right. Right. So they're definitely not going to come back. And they're going to do other things also. That's what, um, that's what they've said anyway. They, they made a direct statement saying yeah. that they will retaliate. Of course they will. Well, they've already increased it by sixty billion their their portion of, of, of tariffs. Right. But the bottom line is there'll be other ways of, of retaliating. And right. and you may not see that immediately in the economy, but your mm -hmm. people will feel it in one right. fashion or form. So I, I, I think the, the big thing is, you know, when you go from a ten percent on two hundred billion to a twenty five percent, that is a significant that is and a that, very significant and that, again that's not to china that's to the importers and of course the importers are going to pass that right on to the consumer right so walmart shoppers um get Watch ready out. yep you know yeah. how these, that little guy is always running around ripping the things down he's going to be running around that's slapping right. them back up again right yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right well we're out of time cynthia oh thank you gosh. so much thank you time goes to go so thank fast you, Tim. I i'm know. tim Alchel oh with cynthia sinclair this is trump week We'll see you next week at 11 o'clock. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.